Welcome to today's show. We are talking to Jag Negra and following the series of Women's Empowerment. Jag Negra, welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having good. me. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Uh, we've talked off camera about your story and it's very exciting to know, you know, you're a very accomplished woman and it's exciting to know that you have broken some barriers, especially within the South Asian community, being a female and being South Asian and going against what is usually expected of South Asian females. So if you could speak a bit about that and, and tell our viewers who you are. Tell me and our viewers can watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, so I'm, uh, there's a lot of layers to it, I think, um, even with my career, like I'm an yeah. artist, which yes. typically isn't really uh, something our parents sort of... Uh, Right. It was um, science and, crit, and math. Right? right. Yeah. Science and math. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I went against the grain that way. Um, I'm uh, I'm gay. I ha I'm married to a woman. I have two kids. Um, yeah. Three year old and a one year old. Um, and yeah, I think there's a lot of um, things where I didn't even think that I was two okay. years, yeah. and it ended up being sort of an extension of high school. Okay. I didn't understand how uh, post secondary education worked or what I was trying to get out of it. And after the two years, I had my like arts diploma and I was like, wait, how do I get a career now? Like, how do I, <laughs> what do I right. do? And um, yeah, I, I talked to my parents about uh, putting myself through art school and they didn't know, I, I wanted to be a graphic designer and they didn't know what that meant, but right. they were like, sure, let's like go ahead. Yeah. And that sort of um, changed the course of my life in many ways. Um, I started out as a graphic designer and then in 2012, I started to teach myself how to draw because I wanted to okay. quit the job where I was. Right. And I was like, <laughs> if I quit, the only people who are gonna know I was an artist are my friends and family. So right. how do I you know, try something different and um, right. yeah. So then you taught yourself how to draw. Yeah. Okay. People yeah. don't usually do that. They right. don't usually teach themselves a new skill. Right. <laughs> like that, you know. Right. Yeah. I um, I started with a 365 day project. Okay. So just jumped right into it. Yeah. Every single day, no matter where I was, I took a little bit of time um, after work on weekends, and I would draw and post it online. So oh. as a way to hold myself accountable. So that yeah. same drawing, you would draw it and add to it every day? No, I drew, I started out, I was doing uh, portraits of people and animals. So okay. um, one per day. And then oh, um, that's sort of what got me, you know, sort of thinking about shapes and that yeah. sort of thing. So 365 days of drawing yeah. is what you did. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. So your inspiration for art, um, where did that start? Who has inspired you to become an artist? Like when you were a child, what did you want to be? I think when I was a child, I, I remember wanting to be a teacher. Okay. Um, and I, I guess like the older I got, um, I, I would watch my brother working on the computer, like when he was in university and he, he took a graphic design course actually. Okay. And I would just like pull up a chair behind him, see what he was doing. And my mind was blown because oh. I didn't realize someone designed logos, right. um, packages, like, you know, <laughs> a Coke bottle was designed by somebody, right? right. So that sort of opened up a whole um, world of, um, I don't know, ideas. Yeah, yeah. possibilities, right? Possibilities. Because you're getting a role model right in front of you doing all these exciting things and then you kind of followed his lead. Is he still doing that? Uh, he's actually, I, I don't quite know what he does. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he's going to okay. watch this I and say what. I was just curious. He's, because... he's like a project manager for a marketing company. Okay, um, so, so kind of he maybe is still a bit still in the creative Still creative, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so if he's watching, yeah. we're, we're good. We're still creative. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so tell me a bit about, now you're talking, I'm talking about female empowerment. Mm -hmm. And you were mentioning that you are gay mm -hmm. and that you're South Asian and gay. So yeah. that's like a few layers of, you know, first of all, you chose a career that was out of the box for South Asian. Yeah. And then you decided to be true to yourself and allow yourself to be your authentic self, let mm -hmm. your parents know. And your parents, you told me off camera, they yeah. received it very well. Amazing. Right. So if you can tell me a bit about that journey and, you know, you're a strong woman and you followed your what your what your feelings were, what your truth, your true self. So Thank tell you. us a bit about that. Yeah, it was honestly um, a huge struggle for me because you know my whole life. Um, once I realized I, I'm gay, um, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. And like, how do I tell my friends and family? Yeah. Because in our culture, we don't talk about it. No. Nope. Uh, there's no education. Our no. parents don't talk about it. No. Nope. And the only sort of um, reference I had was like knowing people get disowned for being gay. Mm -hmm. It's frowned upon. Um, so that was a huge fear of mine that 
I was just going to be all alone. Like all this love I had for my family, like it wasn't going to exist anymore if I yeah. came out and told them my truth. Of course. Um, but yeah, I think it went better, like way better than I expected. Um, that's not to say my parents didn't struggle with it. Of course. Um, but the fact that they, you know, took that news and still loved me yeah. um, despite that, right? right. Um, that sort of changed everything. And it's like I was holding this huge secret all my life. And once I told them, like every conversation after that was easy because I told them my biggest secret. Right. right? So you no longer had that burden on you of yeah. like, how am I going to do this? Right. Yeah. 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 So that right there is women's empowerment because you were true to exactly what you felt, what mm -hmm. you wanted, and your parents received you. I mean, obviously, it would have been a challenge for them because, you know, growing up, they probably thought a certain way, yeah. especially being from this culture. Yeah. So good for you for being courageous enough to kind of pave the way as well. Because our viewers that are watching now, somebody might be watching now and feel like, oh, how do I tell my parents? Yeah. There's nobody else like me. Yeah. There, but there, there is. The thing is, right? there's a lot of us out there. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, unfortunately, have to live in the closet. Um, yeah. And they might go their whole lives without coming out, right? right. Uh, sometimes people are forced into arranged marriage, mm -hmm. um, even when their parents know that they're gay. So I think... You know, the reason I am so vocal about it and I don't shy away from talking about it is because I want to help people who are closeted. Yeah. I want to help educate our parents, right? right? Our grandparents. Because, yeah. like, my, my parents said nobody... This wasn't a concept that they knew. Like, nobody no. talked about it when they right. were younger. Yeah. So, me coming out, had I had to educate them. Yeah. I just, you know, tell them, you guys didn't do anything wrong. Right. Um, there's nothing. There's nothing that you did, like when you were raising me, that made me end up gay. Right. Just who I am. Just who I am. Yeah. So yeah, I, I happily talk about it because I, I want. Right. If I can help one person through yeah. this conversation, it's absolutely. And you are helping because there's somebody watching this, feeling that way, thinking I can't tell anybody that yeah. kind of thing. So tell me a bit about your spouse. Yeah, um, next March will be our 10 year anniversary from Amazing. when we met. Right. Um, yeah. What is her, can you say her name? Her name's Agata. She's okay. Polish. Okay. Um, and it, it's funny, like when we went on our first date, we met online. Okay. And um, very awkward. Like I didn't want to meet her. On, like <laughs> it was just, internet dating was still fairly new. Okay. There weren't really any apps or anything. Right. I was really hesitant about just online dating period. Yes. Um, and we decided to meet for dinner okay. one night. And <laughs> so, like, I don't know. I just, like, didn't want to go into the restaurant. It's like sitting right. in my car. Should Nervous. I leave? Should I go in? Um, but, you know, through that conversation, I remember, like, something in my head said that I would know her forever. Aww. Just in that first meeting. Amazing. And, yeah, like, um, it, she just got along with the family so well. I introduced them, like couple weeks after we met, I think. That quickly, um, wow. Yeah. You just knew. We met in March yeah. and like Easter long weekend, okay. I invited her April. over. <laughs> yeah, April, I guess. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, we bought our first like townhouse at 11 months of being together and wow. it just, everything felt right. And, and it, now you're celebrating 10 years. 10 years. We have two kids. Um, we've traveled all over the world. Your kids, like, tell me about your kids. Yeah, we have a one-year-old, Akash, and yeah. a three-year-old named Jaya. Okay. And they are like the best humans I've ever met. Like, I love being a mom. Aww. And I think it, part of that is, you know, like, um, for so long, I didn't know how it was possible. Yeah. Um, I didn't know I could be, I, I, that I would find someone. I could be in a, you know, stable yeah. relationship. Well, that's one of the questions I think our viewers would probably want to know is mm -hmm. if you're with a female, mm -hmm. I mean, simple science tells yeah. us, well, you're with a female, so how do you have two children? Yeah. Are you okay speaking about that? Yeah. Okay, please share that if you would. Yeah, so we went online um, to find a sperm donor. Okay. Uh, we wanted to find an Indian donor because she's my wife is white and yes. I'm brown. So yes. I wanted uh, we wanted our kids to look like a mix of both of us, right? Right, of course. Um, and we did. Um, we went to some clinics. Like we ended up at two different clinics, okay. um, but we had the kids through IVF. Okay. Um, so basically, we bought sperm yep. online, yep. Um, <laughs> sent it to the clinic and yeah. you know, they do what they need to do. They yeah. extracted her eggs, okay. um, impregnate the eggs. And yeah. you know, we ended up uh, with two kids eventually. It That's was, it was awesome. a long process. Like yeah. she had a few miscarriages and struggle getting pregnant. But, right. Um, but now, now you've got two beautiful children celebrating 10 years. Yeah. So tell me it's Agatha. 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 Yeah. What is Agatha like? Is she a, an empowered woman as well? She must be. Yeah, it's funny. She's like exactly like my dad. 
Oh. Um, the two of them get along so well. Okay. And often I'm like, are you my dad? <laughs> like the thing she'll do, um, yeah. you know, like if we're at their house and he has to build something, like he can never sit still. He's always building something. Yeah. Okay. I got that. Come here. And they'll just oh, go off. And, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, wow. That Easter weekend she came over, like my Masiji was over, my yeah. mom, they were um, teaching her how to make roti and sabji and like, that's she's amazing. Uh, amazing. Like, yeah. Uh, blended right in with everybody. So. Right, so she's embracing her her culture and your culture. Yeah. Are you guys uh, acknowledging the Polish side? Yeah, of you course. Are. Yeah, we took um, like pre-COVID, obviously, when Jaya was six months old. Yeah, we took her to Poland to meet her mm. great grandmother. So what was that like? That must have been amazing. So cool to see oh. like so Agata's grandma holding our six-month-old in her hands and the two of them looking at each other. Um, That's so just precious. Amazing. To yeah. See. Yeah. Okay, so there's so much I want to talk to you about, but if you could describe yourself with three adjectives, what would they be? Hmm. It might be a tough uh, one. It's but. a tough one. <laughs> you know, this is the thing. Like, lately, the last few years, I feel like I've really started to find myself. Okay. Um, before, I would have probably described myself as, like, um, you know, shy, weak, and insecure. Okay. And I think I'm sort of becoming the opposite of those three words okay. now. Um, I've just found myself like through my art, through being confident uh, with who I am. So yeah. yeah. Well, you don't strike me as being shy, definitely not weak and not insecure. So Thank you. good for you for growing and, and not feeling that way anymore. Cause I would never even think to describe oh, you that way. Thank you. Yeah. I think yeah. most of my life was spent sort of like that, but um, it, it just feels good to finally come into myself. You know? Right. So as far as women's empowerment, um, what do you see in the future? Like, I know that we've come a long way. I mean, mm -hmm. there was a time where it was like, it was taboo to even talk about love at all. Yeah. Um, so for you now to be a strong woman, say, this is what I choose because this is my truth. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see in the future happening? Do you think that our South Asian community is more accepting? What have you noticed when you're out and about with your family? Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, Agatha mm -hmm. and the kids, that family. Yeah. Uh, when you're out in public, do you, are you received well? What do you see in the future for South Asian? How is that dynamic, do you think? Um, you know, I think through conversations, that's where we help people understand. Because yes. like when, when we had our kids, my parents phoned all their relatives to tell they them. They did? Yeah, like wow. where my dad called and said, like, we're nana nanny now. Oh my um, gosh. So, that's amazing. And, and now people, like when they call my mom and she calls them, like they ask how the kids are doing. Amazing. Uh, my um, aunt and uncle from India, they came when she was like six months old. They stayed with us, with my parents. and. Yeah visited and like it, you know it's because they didn't know any differently before and right. now that they know like i'm married i have kids yeah. um it's it's just like any it's other normal. thing right it's it's normal what people would traditionally consider normal yeah. it's just yeah it and is. i think a big part of that is because like if my parents had been gossiping about me and saying like somebody fix my daughter right they would have received the, the same sort of feedback but because my parents happily tell people Yes. They don't hide it. Like, right. what? what is someone going to say to them at this point if they right. already accept me and stuff, right? That's so. so, what you just said there actually is so key that if the parents are saying, yes, this is, we accept this, mm -hmm. then what is, what is yeah. anyone else going to say? Yeah. Right. So like, you, beyond my wildest dreams, like to have extended family, knowing who we are, to be introduced to people, yeah. you know, as a family unit is just uh, amazing. So. Yeah. I hope that, you know, we're able to have these conversations. We're able to keep um, breaking down the barriers and the walls and right. make it easier for other people coming out. Right. And your art. Mm -hmm. So before we let you go here, tell us a bit more about your art, because I don't want to lose fact of uh, lose sight of the fact that you are an artist, mm -hmm. um, because I'm fascinated by all these things, all these different layers of jag, right? right. Like it's very exciting. <laughs> but the artist part. To speak a bit more about that, if you would. Yeah. Um, so about uh, two and a half years ago, I started volunteering with the Punjabi Market Collective. Okay. Um, so Vancouver's Punjabi Market was the first one in uh, North America. And over the last like 15 years, it's hasn't been getting much attention or, you know, um, people have sort of forgotten about it. Okay. So I got involved with that and that work really reintroduced me to my South Asian roots. Right. So now everything I do, um, you know, focuses on South Asian, um, you know, uh, portraits or motifs, that okay. sort of thing. Right. Um, for Vasaki, I got to work with the Vancouver Canucks to oh, create their nice. Vasaki logo. Wow. Um, so yeah, it, it's really cool to be bringing our community and our um, culture with me wherever I'm going with my art. Right, right. Like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And not only that, I mean, it sounds to me like you can 
teach your your children mm -hmm. about the culture the yeah. culture is actually both cultures yeah. through your art as well yeah are you incorporating any of the polish uh stuff into your artwork um, or not yet is not yet i think <laughs> you know I'm not, I'm not that connected to the south or uh, to the polish stuff yeah. so i don't want to sort of appropriate appropriate right. it so right, i right. think there are other ways to teach them about their polish right. heritage but for me like because they are mixed um like in our dining room we have a huge portrait that i made um it's a brown skinned like indian woman covered okay. in tattoos on her arms wow um she's you know she's not skinny she's like a like curvier woman yeah. and I purposely did that so that they grow up not having certain um, ideals for yeah. what beauty needs to look like right, right? so right. dark skin tattoos yes. um, curly hair I have curly hair and yeah. often it's looked on as kind of a negative thing like oh look at her curly mess totally. right growing yeah. up so I want to empower them that way and mm -hmm. know that you know women are to be respected women are um, can be strong are strong yeah. and and change um, the narrative that a lot of us grew up with. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's funny that you mentioned the, the, the dark-skinned, tattooed woman that's a bit healthy. That's yeah. what we call healthy. in our culture, yeah. healthy, right? Yeah. Um, I remember when I was little, mm -hmm. uh, I, I had a Barbie, and she was blonde. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any colored Barbies. Like, there was no brown, yeah. there was no black, there was no Asian. It was just white with blonde hair Barbie, yeah. or white with maybe brown hair sometimes. Yeah. That was the only ones. And I remember the first time I actually saw a darker-skinned Barbie, and I was playing with my friends, and nobody wanted to play with that one Barbie. Yeah. Like, yeah. that is so sad. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But we're now in a time where things seem to be shifting in the right direction. Yeah. More acceptance. They even make crayons. Like, we have a crayon set with, like, 50 different skin tones, which is really <laughs> cool, right? Like, we That's used to have crazy. peach, brown, yeah. and black. That's all you right? get. Yeah. And I was colored myself as a peach one because yeah. I didn't... Even uh, before I started working at Punjabi Market... I didn't draw South Asian things. I okay. just didn't connect with it because, uh, like, I grew up in Maple Ridge, where right. I was one of like four South Asians, right. and I never felt Indian. Yeah, never felt proud of it. So right. that's why I was saying, like, the last few years, I've really started to discover who I am and what there is to be proud of. Yeah. You know? Well, and the fact that you're a South Asian woman, and you know, and we've talked about it a few times now, mm -hmm. um, owning your truth and also being an artist and all that stuff. In our culture, a woman working outside of the home, first of all, many years ago was not even accepted. Yeah. And so now to have, you're, you're, no, you know, like you're very empowered. You're doing all these things that, you know, our women that are watching now, our young women that are watching now, they can also be inspired to do mm -hmm. just that. They can, they can achieve whatever they want to achieve, yeah. you know, just like you. So if you could kindly look toward the camera and whoever's watching right now, you could let them know that it is possible for them. Whatever message or quote, something that resonates with you, you can let our viewers know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just want to say it's possible to find your happiness and find your truth and not to feel ashamed of who you are, not to feel ashamed of what you want to do. Um, I think there's a lot of pressures that society and family puts on us, but I think once you're able to um, break past that, find yourself, um, just life gets so much better. And that's something I've been learning, and I think I'm still learning that as I'm going Thank you so much, Jag Negra. I look forward to learning more about you and seeing what comes up in the future for you and your beautiful family. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.